Hey YouTube, Adopted Mike here, and this video is going to be taking a look at this Zalman liquid CPU cooling system, the CNPS20LQ, and it's socket 2011FM1 ready. Here's a look at the side, we've got some specifications. we got a pure copper base with aluminum fins in the radiator. It's a 120 PWM fan. In the back we've got some features in different languages. Here's a good look at it from the side. Alright, well, we're done with the box there, so let's pop this open. Okay. So, a little piece of uh, foam, then we have the installation manual, there is the 4 pin PWM fan, got all of the mounting hardware for the various sockets. Here is the pump and heat sink combination. Let's see if I can get this out. There we go. Alright, so here's the radiator. It's all black with blue on the side. And on this back side here, we actually have the Zalman logo. Okay, so let's see our pivot and flex points here. This hose, obviously, is a gigantic flex point. Bends quite easily. Let's see, we get... If I can keep this together, we get some pivot here at the pump. Back and forth. Goes about that far about that far it's about it doesn't want to move much further than that feels like it oh there it goes it does go that it starts to hit the uh, side there with the screw here we've got real quick I've got the three pin uh, fan header this controls the pump only and then the uh, fan actually will have to plug into a PWM on the motherboard uh, this is not like the Corsair it does not have any uh, fan power. Okay, now back to the hose again. Moving along. We, this is completely solid. Doesn't move, doesn't uh, spin or anything. So that will wrap up the contents of the packaging. And now let's uh, do an install and I'll walk you through, uh, I'll walk you through that. Okay, so we're going to be installing it on this motherboard here. This is a Z68 motherboard, and the processor is an i5-2500K. So anyway, let me position the camera here, and we'll get started. First things first, we take the uh, back plate here, and I don't know if I'll be able to get this up on video. I've got to get kind of close here. But, uh, well, it's not focusing very well, but each of these three holes corresponds to a different socket. There's 1155, 1156, 775, and 1366. So what I've already done here is following what the print on it, you install uh, these little metal uh, threaded deals, nuts, I guess, for the screws, installing them into here and then after that there's some double-sided uh, foam double-sided uh, excuse me sticky um, double-sided sticky foam and install them on here that way uh, to give it some padding to uh, the motherboard when you tighten it down this particular board that I'm working with has uh, mounting holes for 775 and 1155. 
I am uh, choosing to use the 1155s here. Let's see, and then it should just find the. Uh, well, I guess I'll show. I've got the uh, the sticky foam. A little more difficult to do with the through the viewfinder of the camera than I thought it would be. Okay, well. I might need to do this one off camera. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the uh, back plate mounted and I'll zoom in here and then you can see where the th threaded nuts are coming up. There. Okay, now we continue on with the rest of the mounting hardware. Okay, so now I am mounting the um, well, I'm not mounting, I'm putting together this uh, top bracket and it's got these two little funky pieces of plastic and it tells you uh, how to assemble them according to the socket and so you put one piece there and then uh, on the inner side there for uh, the 1155 and then on the inner side and it should just snaps into place like that so now we have that bracket which will go there okay so now we have get these little duberhickers here and they will go to there and that will be in the next step but first this piece here, or the, uh, the hump, let me see if I can twist the camera a little bit, there we go, okay, so we've got to take this here, and then it kind of, uh, well, we drop it. well, it's not quite working like I wanted it to, let me move those out of the way. Alright, so this piece, if you can see, it kind of, uh, here we go. There's little, there, the little, uh, the little teeth in there. What happens is, is they go on there and then You kind of see if I can get it on camera. You spin it just a little bit to where those teeth catch behind these little protrusions on the pump. So that'll hold the pump, uh, or holds this bracket onto the pump. And then use this locking ring. Zoom out a little bit. Locking ring will go in there and then it snaps on. This isn't the most efficient thing I've ever seen, but I mean it works. And there it is. So now it's fairly sturdily mounted. Oh, there was another click. Okay. Now we've got it. So now it's locked into place so the next step from here then is to that on the CPU like so and then we go through with a little of these little screws that fell all over the place earlier and they kind of pop in there and it will secure the pump to the motherboard. There we go. So slowly but surely 
get this going. Okay, I'm just finishing up the tightening here. Okay, I'm gonna double check in cross formation. Okay, so got the pump and heat sink combo mounted to the board now. So one thing that I have had uh, in the past on this um, particular uh, liquid cooling system type uh, things is this three pin needs 12 volts. Um, if you use a header on the board that attempts to adjust um, the, the voltage, not like not PWM, but just attempts to adjust the voltage, like we'll say for example, uh, that uh, say we we'll use this header right there, this uh, system fan. So say we plug it into there and say the BIOS is regulating the voltage to that um, by temperature of something else. So say the chipset has to get to a certain degrees before that goes to 12 volts. That will not work. Um, you need to make sure that the BIOS is not going to uh, slow these pumps by re or slow this pump by reducing this voltage. I did have uh, an issue with a similar system before where I would go into BIOS and get things set up, and it would just kept it would just keep shutting down. Well, finally, I went to the uh, the health or temperature section of the BIOS, and I noticed that. Uh, within 30 seconds, the the CPU was getting to 100 degrees Celsius, or I don't know, I mean, it's in there, not above 90, and the system was powering itself down, you know, to avoid damaging the CPU. Well, I found out that the plug that I had plugged into the BIOS was not giving it 12 volts. So um, I would highly recommend in the beginning, first of all, hooking it to uh, like a Molex to 3-pin off of the power supply or a SATA to 3-pin. That way you know for sure it's getting 12 volts. And also what I've done before too is I've um, used like an external um, uh, AC-DC converter that converts down to Molex or 3-pin. And I actually run the pump, make sure it runs first, make sure I can you know hear it or feel it. Uh, to know it's operating before I attempt to power the system on. Very similar to what you would do with any other water cooling setup. You just, you don't know what the board's putting out on a fan header um, and you just don't know if this thing even works. So yeah, I would definitely recommend, you know, getting it to the power supply for at least the first boot up until uh, you can get into your BIOS and then you can make sure that all of your fan headers are getting 12 volts and uh, then after that, you know, by all means, plug it into a header on the motherboard and you're good to go. So, anyway, this is set up and basically now all I have left to do is install a fan and uh, also to mount the radiator. This particular setup is going to be a test bench system, so I will have to get a little creative as I don't have a case to mount that in. But um, anyway, I wanted to do some temperature testings with this as well, too. So let me finish the build here, uh, and I'll get it on the test bench, and then we will uh, fire it up and uh, see just how well, uh, what kind of overclocks I can get, and what kind of temperatures I can get off of this 2500K. Okay, so now I've got a Molex to 3-pin adapter there, like I talked about, and I'm running the pump so I can you can't really feel it you can kind of feel it a little bit running but I definitely I put my ear to it and I can hear that the uh, the pump is operational and uh, that's just like a little fail safe for me I just like to make sure the thing is going to kick on and uh, so now I'll hook up the power supply and get the rest of the system all connected up Okay, so here's the example from before I was talking about. I had to make sure that I set this uh, uh, here we go. this J power fan mode to manual, and then at a hundred percent below it. And uh, the J power fan right now is running the uh, the pump for the water cooling system. So definitely, well, just what I talked about before. I had to come in and I had to set that to manual one hundred percent to make sure that the uh, deal is getting 12 volts 
and I always like to double check that. It may get 12 volts because this is a PWM, but I just always like to make sure that I've got this set to 100, whether it's a PWM or a 3-pin. It's just, to me, it just seems safer. So yeah, that's what I was talking about before uh, in the BIOS setup, just to double check. Okay, so here is a shot of the uh, finished end result here. Of, and the computer is up, running. I got a clean install of Windows 7. You can see here, I've got the radiator and it is in a push configuration, which is default. Uh, the, way the, fan, well, the way the fan mounts are, uh, it can only really be installed in a push configuration. Currently I have it on the PWM here. Uh, running at 100% because in my opinion it's not very loud and anyway so excuse me so anyway yeah we got that there um, it's idling and let's take a look at the desktop and see what idle temperatures I've got okay so I'm gonna point out first that I'm a wussy overclocker so I just went with the EVGA dummy overclock in uh, the BIOS settings which added uh, 600 megahertz so this will be a 3.9 gigahertz overclock uh, with turbo so uh, and obviously it's gonna pick out the V core uh, as well too looks like there uh, so far we've seen a max of 1.294 and our temperatures on the cores or right there we've seen idling uh, obviously over here was during boot up um, and I'm not sure where that fell fell pretty low there but sitting at idle on the desktop we see most of the cores around 27 degrees 28 degrees you know right in there so I'm gonna fire up a uh, prime 95 well actually up here too yeah, it's only running at a 16 multiplier currently, so it's definitely stepped itself down and the core voltage accordingly to it, uh, 0.953. So I'm going to fire this bad boy up on Prime 95 and we'll let it run that for, uh, I don't know, it's about 9.30. So let's run that for about a half an hour and uh, then we'll get back. Okay, so we're about 45 minutes into the testing right now of uh, with running Prime 95, and we've got an ambient temperature in the room of let's see, there we go, 23.7 degrees Celsius. And now we'll take a little zoom in on the core temps. So we're seeing, I would guess that's probably 51 degrees or so and uh, that would give us about a 27 degree delta which isn't uh, horrible at all and then we'll go back over here to verify my wussy overclock of 3.9 gigahertz at 1.27 on the core voltage yeah I know it's wussy and but um, yeah, I'm not a big overclocker anyway, so probably not the right guy to be testing out an air cooler. So anyway, that kind of wraps up the testing here of this Zalman uh, all-in-one liquid cooling system. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thank you for watching.